Hello again. Today we're going to take a look at one of the most important methodologies of removing image noise and clearing up your images incredibly. And this is by the removal of what we call dark frames. Let's open an image and take a look. Uh, this is an image, a five minute long image of the Pelican Nebula taken through a hydrogen alpha filter uh, for five minutes. And as you can see, using the screen stretch, uh, really stretched it out considerably. You can see some of the nebulosity in there, but there's also an awful lot of this speckly noise. And it turns out that um, and if we turn this to like medium level, all you see are some bright stars and an awful lot of speckly noise. It turns out that CCD chips are very susceptible to uh, thermal noise because they are in and of themselves black body radiators and they actually are sensitive, sensitive enough to pick up their own infrared emissions um, from thermal radiation and convert that into a hot pixel. Literally, hot pixel. No pun intended. It's the real deal. Um, but thank goodness for simple mathematics and the ability to collect this um, information. We can actually subtract the dark noise. It turns out to be very consistent from image to image. And so let's, let's talk about that. Let's open up another kind of image here, which is called the dark frame. Now, this is a five minute dark frame uh, taken at the same temperature as our light frame, the Pelican Nebula. This is a five minute long image too. Look at this. And if we, if we brighten up a bit, you'll see there's all that thermal noise. And there's also some of these little hot pixels here, which are typically caused by cosmic ray strikes. Nothing to be alarmed about because what happens when we take uh, five or six of these dark frames and average them together, we get what is called a master dark frame, and we literally just subtract that from our light frame, and voila, all the noise should go away. The beautiful thing about applications like Maxim DL is that it will do all of this automatically for you. Let's look at the process. Go to the process menu now and choose the set calibration option. If there's a lot of stuff in here, just say clear all groups and that will just bring it back to a simple starting point. Over here, just for this exercise, choose a, a dark and then click on the add group button and that will create an empty group of dark frames. Now we have to add files to that. Down here in the bottom, click the add button and I've created an entire folder of process files and here I'm just going to select all the dark frames. I've got a number of them and I'll click on open and then click on OK. Now here's the magic. When I go to process this, MaximDL will open up each of those dark frames, average them together, and then take a look at how long all those exposures were for and then utilize that to subtract the noise from my five minute pelican image here. Watch the magic. Boom, it's done. And now, using the screen stretch window, you now see the Pelican Nebula in all of its glory. And this is just a single five minute integration of the Pelican Nebula on a good dark night through a very small telescope. This was a uh, just a 60, oh no, sorry, this is a 105 millimeter refractor. So, not bad, not bad. So, some ideas about dark frames. When, when dealing with dark frames, it's a pretty good idea to go collect them uh, once if you're an observatory operator, uh, collect them once every week or once every month. Uh, and you can create a library of them, if you will. And I like to give them a, a special naming convention. I like to name all my darks dark, and then an underscore, and then an N10 in this case for the temperature. If you're operating at negative 25, it would be N25. And then after that, it's just a sequential value, 001, 002 etc. You can keep these for a long time. So you can create a library of dark frames if you wish. Um, two to three months is not unusual for many observatories to keep their dark frames as they don't tend to change all that often. They will change over courses of six and seven months. So if you're doing science work, it's probably a good idea to do these at least once a month. Um, 
And there you have it, the magic of dark frames. Um, it is definitely the most important methodology of reducing noise in an image. And at this point, uh, we're ready to take on more complicated things like bias frames and flat fields, which we'll talk about in a future video. Thanks for watching.